Hi everyone, welcome to Christ Point Church, Melbourne. My name is Carlos Corrado and I am just a simple preacher. Thank you and bless you for allowing us to come to the sanctuary of your home to share God's Word with you. Christ Point Melbourne has been deployed to share the good news of salvation to everyone, beginning right here in our home in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, all the way to the ends of the world. The church is not a building, but a group of people who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have a true relationship with the Father in heaven and are a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. We at Christ Point Melbourne want to be able to help people connect to their destiny and their destiny is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then we want to equip them to go out into the world and connect others to their destiny also by sharing the gospel of Jesus. The Word of God tells us this in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Today is a special day for us here at Christ Point Church, Melbourne. We shall be celebrating and remembering and sharing the Lord's Supper. So we pray that you have bread and grape juice ready to partake with us this morning. We at Christ Point Church, Melbourne want to encourage everyone to put into gear their God-given talents. The Bible tells us in the book 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. We want to empower, equip, and give young leaders the opportunity to go forth in their calling to expand the kingdom of God here on earth by outreaching young people and young adults through the use of modern technology and other means, of course. The scripture reminds us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. We at Christ Point Church Melbourne are happy to introduce to you and the world a young man who has stepped up firm in his faith and calling. Jonathan Condy is a young man who is studying civil engineering at Victoria University and is also studying local church ministry with Acts and doing a church internship at Rise Christian Church. So once again, thank you for joining us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we begin today by giving you thanks. Thank you for the privilege you have given us of being your children. Thank you for your love which endures forever and it never fails. Though there are many ways in which we have failed, we have not exceeded the supply of your mercy and grace. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. And as we open the Bible today, we pray that we would hear your voice. We pray for Jonathan as he brings us your word. Please, Lord, use him as an instrument, as a tool to minister to us, and may you continue to guide him in his spiritual walk. Bless him abundantly and provide for him according to your perfect will. We ask that your Holy Spirit be at work this morning in our lives, opening our ears to hear, our hearts to receive your word, and our minds to keep and guard it. May we be transformed in your likeness day by day, beginning today. We pray this and a whole lot more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our King and Savior. Amen. Have called us in your life, your 
Light uncovered the world to see now. You alone have made a way for us in your love. You are life. I'm living in the light of my Savior, dancing in the arms of forever. I'm singing like I'm walking on water. Savior, dancing in the arms of forever. I'm singing like I'm walking on water. You are life, alive in me. I give my life to follow. Cause your love is all I want now. You are life. Time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before.
time to give your heart Come just as you are to worship Come just as you are Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Lord's Supper. This morning, we're going to partake of the elements together. Just as God blessed Abraham, God's ultimate blessing on mankind was a plan of redemption and of salvation through His one and begotten Son, Jesus Christ. His plan brought Jesus to earth to be crucified up on the cross, bearing our sins and transgressions. Through this ultimate sacrifice at the cross, of his sinless son, we were able to be brought back to him, the Father in heaven. A couple of weeks ago, we celebrated Easter and marveled at his sacrifice and resurrection for every single one of us. We as Christians need to remember on a daily basis that God's purpose for sending Jesus to die up on the cross at Calvary was for forgiveness of our sins and for our reconnection with him. But we as humans are weak and forgetful. So it was that Jesus left a simple reminder for us not to forget His death on that cross at Calvary and the significance of that cruel event. It is called the Lord's Supper, or in some churches, Holy Communion, or simply Communion. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 onwards, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner should be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Paul goes on to encourage each and every single one of us to examine ourselves before he or she eats from the bread and drinks the cup. The Word of God continues to say, But a man must examine himself. In so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So let us take a moment of quiet reflection and prayer as we examine our lives and prepare to participate in this time of recommitment to our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, I bow before you in humility and ask you to examine my heart today. Show me anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion or unforgiveness that may be hindering my relationship with you. I know that I am your beloved child. Having received you into my heart, and life and having accepted your death as penalty for my sinfulness. The price you paid covered me for all time and my desire is to live for you. As I take this bread representing your life that was broken for me, I remember and celebrate your faithfulness to me and to all who will receive you. I can't begin to fathom the agonizing suffering of your crucifixion. Yet, you took that pain from me. 
You died for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favor. Thank you for that your death gave me life, life in abundant and eternal life forever. As you instructed your disciples, I too receive this bread in remembrance of you. And in the same way, as I take this cup representing your blood poured out from a splintered cross, I realize that you were the supreme sacrifice for all my sins, past, present, and future. Because of your blood shed for me and your body broken for me, I can be free from the power and penalty of sin. Thank you for your victory over death. You took death that I deserved. You took my punishment. Your pain was indeed my gain. And today I remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you gave me through the blood that you spilled. But while my relationship is secure with you, I know sin can break out of fellowship at times. I am still human and I often forget who I am and whose I am. You want to convict and correct me, not shame me. You love me like a perfect parent. You'll never disown me or leave me. You love me no matter what. But sin hurts both my heart and yours. So before I take communion today, I am asking you to truly search my heart and reveal hidden things for which to ask your forgiveness. Each time I take communion, Lord, I want to recommit my life, my heart, my thoughts, my everything to you. Fill me today with your powerful spirit. As I go about my day, help me to hold this fresh remembrance and the story that never grows old close to my heart. Help me to share its message faithfully everywhere I go. In your precious name, I ask this and a whole lot more. In your name, Jesus. Amen. The Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for that sacrifice upon that cross. We thank you, Lord, because we can freely say that we are your children because of your sacrifice and not because of what we have done, but because of what you have done for us. Lord Jesus, I ask that um, you remain with us the rest of the service, that you remain with us and in our lives and in our hearts and in our minds, Lord Jesus, from here, today, tomorrow, and forever. Lord Jesus, we thank you, we love you, and we ask all this in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you once again, and let us continue with this morning's message. battle against the world, the flesh, in unseen forces, in dark places. Therefore, train yourself to be godly. Guard your heart. Prepare your minds for action. Take every thought captive. Resist the devil. Demolish strongholds. Stand firm. 
persistent prayer. Fight the good fight. Good morning, my name is Jonathan Condi and I'd like to welcome you to today's message. Um, today's message is going to be on standing firm in the faith and I would like to ask you two questions for you to kind of consider as we go through this message. The first question being, what does it mean to be a Christian in today's society? And the second question being, what does it mean to be a Christian who stands firm in the faith today? The reason I ask these questions and I would like you to consider these questions um, and apply them to you personally. Um, today's message, um, I really don't want to be um, throwing out these th deep theological ideas, but to make it kind of a practical message, something that um, you can reflect on and s something that I hope um, gives you the ability to, um, to grow in a way and to grow in, in your f personal faith and um, to hopefully eventually help and to lead and, and serve in the community, um, sharing Christ's love with others. Um, the reason that I kind of would ask those questions is because we see that Christianity today is changing. We see that it's no longer the norm to be Christian, um, to hold Christian worldviews, to hold Christian ideals. Um, one, one classic example of this is, is when I was younger, Sunday used to be a day for church there used to be a day where shopping centers would have really really reduced trading hours um, to the point where it would just be open for a couple of hours to get the bare essentials um, however we see that this is no longer the case today it's pretty much another Saturday it's no longer just for the church it's a day where people can go out and do whatever they kind of want to do similar to a Saturday another day for partying um, for enjoyment and it's something that I find is really interesting, how we kind of are getting further and further away from, from Christianity. And I think it's, it's definitely something that should make us um, stand out and as Christians should make us get together and say, hey, something's gone wrong here and hey, there's something we need to do about that. And what I would like to do is I would like to talk firstly about um, these two Christian identities that I have seen um, within the church and as I say within the church I mean within the body of Christians the church being Christians not necessarily a building not, not the building itself or a particular location um, yeah but within the whole church um, as a young Christian um, I've had the opportunity to go to a lot of different churches meet a lot of different people, um, get to understand a lot of different world views, um, views towards the Bible, views about Christ, uh, and views about biblical teachings. Um, and it's been a real privilege, it's been a real blessing, um, and something that I have definitely enjoyed and has strengthened me in my faith. Um, but what I've kind of seen is, is these two Christian identities that I would say are, are a little bit dangerous. Um, within Christianity um, it's kind of the first idea being the Christian um, who accepts Christ and I don't say that I say dangerous I would like to make a little bit clear when I say dangerous I kind of mean um, not necessarily um, dangerous to like physically dangerous but a little bit more spiritually dangerous um, to, to the whole body I think um, and to, to sharing Christ's love um, because something seems to have gone a little bit wrong um, but the first idea being Christians who become Christians which, which isn't dangerous it's it's an amazing thing but stop there and we, we tend to see that in Christians who may come to like a Sunday service being every now and then um, a Christmas service an Easter service but kind of stop there they, they follow the commandments you know uh, the Ten Commandments that's what they kind of base their life around um, not really necessarily deep, dark, like reading their Bible, um, but kind of that idea of just the Ten Commandments, and that's kind of where they stop, you know. 
um, not necessarily understanding the gospel, um, but really, you know, Christmas, um, Easter, and they tend to be people who have been brought up in a Christian home, um, but haven't necessarily had that strong foundation um, from from the church, or they may have attended church when they were younger, but kind of stopped there. Um, and then, but they still call themselves Christians. And the second I identity that I would say is the Christian that comes to church uh, every week, every Sunday, you know, they come to the Bible studies, but it stops there. And the reason that I say this can be a little bit dangerous is because we don't have the sharing of the gospel and that's and the important commission that Christ gave to us. And it comes from the Great Commission um, that I say, and I mentioned the commission, which comes from Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Um, as Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. Amen. And that is something that um, what I have tried to do with my life is base my life in a way that, that follows that great commission. And it's such an amazing commission, and it's for every single believer. You know, to, we, we should be go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There's an amazing challenge there. Um, but those two identities don't really meet. They don't really follow that, that path that's actually been asked of all Christians. That we, we, we're out there in the community. We're helping others grow as Christians. Um, and I think that's very, very... Um, I think it's dangerous in a way. It's not really promoting the growth of the church. And as society becomes less and less christ orientated and more in towards secular world views um, there is a real need for strong christian leaders to be out there in the community serving helping others helping the orphans the widows um, which we see in new testament um, in the new testament we, we should be out there and i think in today's society that is definitely something that is lacking uh, we need to have more Christians who, who have a passion for the gospel um, and follow the Great Commission because that's, that's what we're called to do. We're called to, to share Christ's love, not just stop at the acceptance, um, not, just, not just gather all the biblical knowledge that we can get this amazing understanding um, because that's something that we saw that the Pharisees did. They had this amazing understanding, but they missed the point. They missed the loving one another. They missed helping others in the community. And that's what we need to be, do, be doing Sorry, as Christians. Um, and it's something that it's not easy. It's not going to be an easy journey. It's something that's hard. Um, and that kind of really leads into that the first, the two main steps um, that I would like to talk about, about standing out in your faith. The first being that growth step and the second being that standing out step um, when I say growth I know it kind of mentioned in that second identity uh, where it's a bit uh, where you get to the point where it's just growth and what we want to do is we want to make sure that it doesn't just get to that point where it's just growth but it also gets to the point where it's sharing stepping out and what I would like to do is I'd like to read to you a message um, that Jesus kind of gave it's called build on the rock and it comes from Matthew 7 24 27 Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, floods came, and the wind blows, blew, and, the, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall as as christians i and as a christian it's there's such an amazing wealth of knowledge in the bible um in, in especially in the new testaments and from the teachings of christ there's such an amazing amount of, of wise sayings and this is definitely a saying that it's not necessarily just for christians you know 
um, I'm studying engineering and you can get a lot out of this out of this story there's there's things in there that it is it is basic um, the kind of knowledge behind that um, you know it's it's smart to build your house on a rock compared to it's it's to build a house on sand um, but there's a lot in this story and this story is something that's a very a very simple story to understand and what I'd like to do is I'd like to apply that story to this idea of growing as Christians ready to serve and help others um, the first kind of thing that we kind of see is that house that's built on a rock um, that's founded on the rock and the second part being the house is built on sand we see that this house that's built on rock is is built on something that is is strong it's founded on something that's that's hard you know rock when water comes when wind goes against it, it it stays there it's not moving unlike sand you know you get sandstorms um, which has sand going everywhere you know when the wind comes it just goes with it goes along with it and the, their idea of these two different things sand being really loose and rock being something that's really hard in this story we see two houses we see the house that's on sand the house that's built on rock the house that's built on sand we see has taken the easy road out has basically just seen an area gone that'll do has built the house on the person who's designed the house it's, it's taken the easy road quick road um, road that doesn't require effort and just put a house up there and, but what we see with the person who, who builds a house on rock has put a lot of time has put a lot of effort um, into making sure that that foundation is strong um, we, we don't naturally see flat rocks I, I would say it's possible to see flat rocks but we generally don't naturally see flat rocks that are, are flat and big enough to build a house on so we, we obviously see that there is there is effort required in that we need to make that 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 floor flat that foundation flat so the house can then be built on it and that requires effort that requires time that requires patience um, and we see that there's two very different aspects two very different aspects that can be applied into our biblical lives today into our spiritual lives today um, we see that the house that's built on on sand is something that's quick doesn't have strong foundations um, hasn't had time spent on it but the house that's built on rock has had a lot of time a lot of, and stands testament and and the kind of idea that I really kind of bring to this is I don't know if you know those really old houses that we see around um, you know like Werribee Mansion for example you know it's it's been there for a long long time it's a testament to the architects the engineers the laborers who built that house um, it's a testament to its design it's something that's strong and it's something that I think can be applied into our lives today as Christians when Christians have a firm foundation um, when when trials come when things get hard we're able to to withstand those trials and those those temptations and we, we stand testament but a house that's built on sand it, it falls over time and when, when we, we think about them in a personal aspect as, as individuals um, you know the, the, the foundation of the house built on sand it withers away and a person who who doesn't necessarily have that strong foundation when a trial comes when those hard times comes they, they break apart and but that person who's built with that scriptural background doesn't who has that understanding you know that it's gonna get hard but I know what to do here they're prepared um, I love what Timothy says here um, in 2nd Timothy 4 1 to 5 I'll read it out to you I'll mention it a little bit later he says I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who would judge the living and the dead at his appearing at, a, at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be ready in and out of season convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will reap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables but you be watchful in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry the main point that I really want to get out of this is that idea of be ready in and out of season. That house that's built on the rock, that's built on something strong, 
is ready in and out of season. That house that's built on sand isn't ready in and out of season. It might be ready and it might be in season. The house, sure the house might be all right in, in summer when there's no wind, where it's just hot. It might, it might work, it might last. As individuals, we might last those easy times. But once it gets tough, once those situations get hard, once we get a, a few temptations, battle, they fall down, we fall down. But if we have that strong scriptural understanding and background, we still remain strong. We still remain firm in our in our faith. And we, we see that um, with Jesus when he's tempted by the devil, that the devil throws out at, to him, um, you know, these temptations and, and he applies with with Bible verses and Bible scriptures and to the point where the devil leaves you know and and there's really something that's in our lives it's a testament when we have a um, strong scriptural background and another thing that I would like to talk about is these two houses um, when we have a Christian who has had their house built on sand doesn't necessarily have strong scriptural background and somebody who does when when a trial hits both of them for example and one person falls that person who's falls um, is able to come to the person who has who's been built on a strong scriptural background for refuge they're able to to walk up to them um, and ask for advice and we see this especially with, with Christians who are elderly who have been there and done that as the saying goes um, who have had similar experiences and this might be with things like gambling addictions um, and, and so many more different type of topics and, and things but people are able to to be able to support them somebody who's built with a strong scriptural basis able to support them not only themselves but support others and it's an amazing an amazing testament um, to having that strong scriptural background and another kind of idea that I kind of think about is that idea of the tree where we start off with a seed being planted and it grows. Um, and you know, my granddad has an avocado tree and you know that the tree gets bigger and bigger and bigger um, as it grows along, but it started off small. It started off as an avocado seed. Um, and what, what we're seeing with that tree is, is kind of like that idea of growing in your Christianity where we continually grow. Our Christian journey is 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 always growing. Whether you've been a Christian for two years, whether you've been a Christian for a week, or whether you've been a Christian for forty years, there's always ways that we can grow. And like that avocado tree, um, it starts off growing. You know, it doesn't necessarily bear fruit when it starts off, it, but it does get to the point where it it, it bears fruit. Um, but it starts off growing. And as Christians, we need to start off not necessarily um, going into the world preaching the gospel at the start and I say this because there is a danger in doing so or spreading the wrong gospel and the wrong message but we start off understanding learning and what happens is over time we start sharing fruit and that idea of sharing fruit having those strong roots in the ground with that firm foundation is we start sharing fruit and and like my granddad's avocado tree it started off small, got bigger, and it gets to the point where it, it starts giving off avocados. And over time, the tree gets bigger and more avocados come off the tree. And I, I would say that the tree is probably about four or five meters tall now. It's a big tree. Um, and it's over time, more and more avocados have come off this tree. And over time, it's similar to our Christian journey, where more and more um knowledge and scriptural understanding gives us the ability to to share more and more of the gospel and share more and more of christ's understanding so it's important that we continually learn to to grow as christians um and understand the word of the lord and it's definitely something that isn't necessarily going to be an easy walk um it's going to be hard but it's important that we we grow we sit down we take time out of our really busy lives um, for example, I'm at university and right now during the COVID-19, university is online and my average day is about 10 to 12 hours of studying. Um, it's, it's very intense um, and it's definitely hard for me to take time out of my day um, 
after spending uh, such a long time studying um, to study the word of the Lord and it's difficult people who come home from work um, after 10, 8, 10, 5 hours it's it's difficult to, to stop and take time to study to spend time devotion to spend time talking to other people um, mentoring, being mentored it's, it's not easy and that's the same I, I say for parents you know parenting is an amazing challenge you know I look at my parents and sometimes I'm like wow you know from the moment they walk they wake up from the moment they go to sleep it's all about the kids um, and it's something that is definitely a real trial um, and you know it's hard to fit in some time to consider reading consider these biblical ideas to read the gospel and it's a real challenge um, but I could I encourage you um, to, to keep on growing um, and to, to, to try and work out those times to spend sharing the gospel to, to understand the gospel to make those times in our lives where we can grow and then we can share um, and it's something that's definitely not easy um, but there's a real need for it and and like we see in 2 Timothy 4 1 to 5 for the time will come when the desires will not enjoy when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables but you be watchful in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry we see that there's going to be a time where people are going to turn away they are going to want to hear what they want to hear um, and it's going to and it's going to happen and you can kind of see it in the church today as sad as it sounds you can see it in the church today where we have so many different denominations people wanting to go their own way when you don't have that strong scriptural understanding where you, you turn it where people turn away from from the right from the right message from from the right Jesus I say because we get it that people get distorted views of Christ and there's danger and there's a danger in that but I'd like to encourage you to, to try to work out times where you can share the gospel um, with with others and really step outside of of our comfort zones because I think there's a real danger being comfortable with with your own Christianity in a way um, not that you, you being comfortable being a Christian but accepting that kind of mediocrity that in today's society people that accept you know kind of get into that point where it's, it's comfortable to go to church every Sunday um, but really step out go into the world preach the gospel go help the orphans and the widows that we see people in the New Testament did um, be there in the community because there's such a big need for Christians who are firm in their faith to be in the community especially for people who um, in the community who don't necessarily um, especially like orphans who have don't have um, strong scriptural backgrounds and there are people out there who need that help who uh, don't have a like a strong upbringing um, and need that help there are people there that need to be mentored and there's always a need and it's not easy and I really challenge you to step outside of your comfort zone um, as Christian leaders because we're all called to go into the world preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations as I kind of finish up um, I really want to give to you three verses um, that I want you to consider in your Christian walk and your Christian journey um, and, and the first being from Romans 1 16 and it reads for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek and we see it's such an amazing verse you know will we be able to to say that um, when when we kind of what in our lives today when we kind of are faced with temptations are we able to say for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ what a powerful message we see here um, and it's something that is a real challenge it challenges me um, and I really want you to consider that and ask yourself this question are you able to say for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because in a way that leans towards social media sorry not a way in a society that leads towards social media and um, the norm not being Christian it becomes harder and harder and sometimes people hide behind their phones and, and don't say anything when when we get into these conversations 
about Christianity or religion, um, are we able to say we are not ashamed of the gospel? And I have these verses for you to consider and to self-examine. Um, and I think that's such a really important verse. Um, but the second verse I'd like you to consider it comes from 1 Corinthians 16, 13. And it's kind of an encouragement here. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. And we see an encouragement um, in this verse here. Be on your guard. You know, be ready in and out of season, as, as we see Paul telling young Timothy. Um, stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Be those strong Christians out in the community who aren't afraid of anything. Um, you know, but do everything in love. Do everything to, to help others, to, to share Christ's love. And the last verse I'd like to share with you is 2 Timothy 4-7. to And it's a verse that I definitely um, hold to very high esteem, I think, in, in the way that I live, um, because it's a real challenge. Um, so 2 Timothy 4-7 to reads, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. And it's such an amazing verse. And, and I hold it to, to such a high I said cut high esteem and to a high level because it really challenges me. At the end of my life, will I be able to say I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith? And this verse and these three verses, I really want you to to self-examine. And it really this verse has really challenged me in my life because it really has questioned, made me question myself and the way that I live my life for Christ. Am I living my life? wholeheartedly for Christ, doing everything for Him to help grow His kingdom, because that's what we're called to do as Christians. Um, and it's something, you know, that I always reflect on, um, because it's such a powerful verse. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Um, will you be able to say that on your last days? Um, and when you get to heaven, would you be able to say, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith? What a challenge there, and as I'd like to finish, I would like to, to kind of talk about why I have, have spoken to you about this growth stage and this stepping out stage. Um, and it's really about sharing Christ's love um, and Christ's sacrifice, you know. While we were still sinners, while we made all these mistakes, Christ died for us. Christ coming to fulfill the law, and we see in the Old Testament that um, we, we have these partial sacrifices, that you know, a sacrifice of a lamb. When you did something wrong and you would need to keep on redoing that um, the punishment for sin being death but christ came to fulfill that christ came and he was the the perfect sacrifice um and you know he he was the perfect christ he never did anything wrong he was the perfect person and he came to fulfill the sins of the whole world so if anybody may makes has done anything wrong christ fulfilled that and it's something that is so powerful for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have life everlasting. If you believe that Christ died on the cross for your sins, and you, you ask for repentance of those sins, you will be saved. And it's something that is such an amazing thing. And that's why we share these messages of growing in faith. And, and hopefully um, this will encourage you um, to grow in your faith and, and to share um, Christ's love for us. Um, and to share the gospel. What I'd like to do is I'd like to close by praying. So uh, could you please uh, bow your heads and uh, close your eyes uh, as we enter into prayer. Heavenly Lord, Father, thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. Lord, another day of life. Lord, I'd like to ask you um, to encourage us, Lord, and to, to give us wisdom and guidance on our journey of faith, Lord. Um, Lord, please help us grow in your word and in your knowledge and in your teachings, Lord, um, so that we're able to stand firm in, in the faith, Lord, to be able to step out into the community, to help the orphans, to help the widows, to help those in need, to help those who didn't have, don't have the, the opportunities, Lord, that, that we have in our lives. Um, and Lord, help us to share the gospel. And Lord, help us to, to, to better understand you, Lord, and your will for our lives. Lord, I'd like to ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming. Um, and listening to my um, message today on standing firm in the faith. If you have any questions, um, please message Christ Point Church Melbourne. Um, they would love to hear from you, would love to hear from you. Um, have a great week. God bless.
Thank you. The preacher has finished his message. It is now for you to make a decision to come to the Father through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus into your heart today, repeat this prayer with me from the bottom of your heart. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I know you died on the cross for me. I now turn away from my sins and ask you to forgive me. I now invite you into my heart and life. I now trust you as Lord and Saviour of my life, and I will follow you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. If you made this prayer with me, let me welcome you to the family of God. I encourage you to contact us through our contact details on our webpage, Facebook and YouTube, Christ Point Melbourne Online. If you'd like to know more about Jesus, please make contact with us and we will help you and equip you in your new journey in Christ, but also to go out into the world and continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others who do not know Him yet. God bless.